Well, Mike, thanks for being here. Yeah, let's, thanks for welcome to San Francisco. Thanks uh, for being yes, here. Yes, thank you. You too. Um, let's start off with that news about the buyback, nineteen billion. Also, a dividend, a three billion dollar annual dividend, essentially. Why? Well, it's uh, part of our ongoing shareholder return program. You know, we announced that our intentions to do this in 2021 at our analyst day. And one of the things we do as a team is we lay out a business plan that's thoughtful, and then we go execute on it. And this business is producing enormous cash, and we see a lot of prospects for that to continue in the future. Our aspirations next year, 16 to 18, and then 18 billion and beyond in the out years. So it's time to continue returning that cash to shareholders. Now, for the first time ever, we're including a dividend in that program. So it's up to $19 billion over the next five quarters inside of which $3.75 billion or thereabout would be in the form of our first ever quarterly dividends. Right, and that starts in Q4. This year and then $3 billion for, yep. for next year. Now, uh, Deutsche Telekom obviously owns more than 50% of this company, and that continues to accrete up as you buy back shares. So what would their plan be? Will they sell into the buyback, or will they separately sell shares themselves uh, over time? Well, what they indicated publicly at their most recent earnings call is that starting sometime in 2024, assuming this buyback is going on, they would be selling shares in order to continue target being in the low 50s. And so that doesn't mean full participation. It doesn't mean participation exactly in our program. But they like this level, according to their public remarks, of being in the low 50s. And so you can expect some participation from them in 2024. Got it. Uh, other news that was not that long ago, uh, Kelly mentioned it in her introduction as well, is the job cuts that you announced. Um, and within that, and this got my attention at the time, you said what it takes to attract and retain customers is materially more expensive than it was just a few quarters ago. Why is that? John Stanky, by the way, sat in his very seat earlier this morning and said he's not seeing what you said you're seeing. Yeah, I agree with John. What I'm talking about is versus uh, a few quarters ago, such as at the height of the pandemic. And all the companies have made public comments, and it's clear through our disclosures that uh, the negative revenues uh, and, or sorry, negative margins on our handset revenues have been growing. And, you know, customers in each time period, they're looking for something different. Right now, they want an incredible deal on phones. And we're guided by customers. Now, it's stable right now. You saw our performance in Q2. We had the highest postpaid phone net additions in eight years, some of the highest ever for a Q2. And so we're performing really well in this environment. Um, but it is an environment that, according compared to the height of the pandemic, is more expensive. So why the job cuts? Well, it's part of what my job is to look around corners on this business and prepare our company to be successful, not just for this year, but for two and three years down the road. And what I said in that long note, in addition to the fact that it's expensive right now, is that it's time for our company to recapture the entrepreneurial, fast-moving, decisive, efficient culture that got us here in the first place. Why, did you lose it? Well, we've been focused on putting together two massive companies and engaging in the most historic network build ever conducted in this country. That's how we've achieved our 5G leadership. And we have some duplication of roles, and we have some overlap, and we have middle management that's slowing down decisions. And so it's just time for us to make sure that every single employee who works at T-Mobile knows that what they're working on is essential for our future. And that's important for the culture in our company, as well as for our ability to move fast, be decisive, and be efficient. Uh, Tyler has a question for you. Mike, I want to come back to, to a question that, that David asked a moment ago, and, and he quoted your, your words, what it takes to attract and retain customers is materially more expensive than it was just a few years, quarters ago, excuse me. Uh, I want to bear, bear down on those words, attract and retain. What specifically has gotten more, more expensive? Is it the cost of the handsets uh, and that, that that has been an, uh, a, a sort of disincentive for people to upgrade? Or what, what is... What is rising uh, and becoming more expensive in your effort to attract and retain customers? Well, it's stable right now, but compared to the height of the pandemic, it costs more to subsidize the cost of those handsets, to the premise of your question. Okay. Handset prices have risen, and customers want a great deal on handsets. Now, there are offsetting impacts on that. The monthly service investment that customers make, they've been choosing up our rate card, and that's helpful to offset those costs. We've been way ahead of plans uh, on our enterprise and smaller markets and home broadband business plans, so that's offsetting. But yeah, you know, compared to the height of the pandemic, those device subsidies are higher, and you can see that in all of our okay. public disclosures.